So I'm going to attempt to explain how to use the Apex Replay Debugger in Visual Studio Code. Now, we all know how to use the debug log in, in Developer Console. And, you know, it's pretty easy. And we all probably all know how to um, read debug logs just in the org, even though they're much harder to read. So this now takes it to the next level. If they ever come up to their promise of removing the developer console and going everything to Visual Studio Code, then we'll know how to use this. Now, I'm finding it good, but really tricky to understand how to get started. Okay, so let's just set the scene here. I'm in my uh, org, which is my developer org for Rad Women Code Part 2, um, and I'm creating a uh, I've got a lead trigger and a lead trigger handler class. Um, I'm writing some absolutely crap code. You are not allowed to comment on my code. I'm learning and it's really bad. So of course I need the debugger to understand what the hell is going on. And down here I've got some tools here. This is re really handy to learn to use this, what the status bar to turn things off and on. So right at the moment, I probably don't need my source control turned on. I probably don't need my problems turned on because my problems actually turn up there. Anyway, um, and I probably um, want my debug turned on because I'm going to be debugging. Okay, so the very first thing I want to do is exactly like we would do in a normal org is to turn on debug the debug log. So in a normal org, of course, we are going to go to our um, debug logs and we're going to create a new user trace flag. So we're going to do the same thing here and we'll go to commands and we will turn on apex debug log for replay debugger okay and i know there's probably sfdx commands that you can type but i'm just not at that point at the moment i'm just at the point of first of all starting to learn how to use this so this bit takes a while to actually do you can see here this is the command that's actually running um, So yeah, it does take a while to get to get it done. Okay, and then it's um, turned on. Okay, so it's recording detailed logs until 6.33 p.m. Okay, so now we can make our code fail. So that's easy, um, cause my code fails um, as soon as I go and create a lead. All I want is just a couple of standard uh, required fields entered and I hit save and of course I've got a um, system null pointer exception this temp to dereference a null object I'm trying to work out why that is um, so the next step we do is uh, we go command palette get apex debug logs And then we've got the debug log there. 6.04 p.m. That's exactly the debug log we've got. Okay. So, of course, this is our regular um, debug log. Bit, it's a bit of color, so that's good. Um, and I think there is a way to customize the colors in the debug logs. Um, there is a command that you can run. Uh, so, but, you know, it's sort of helpful. So here's our system null pointer exception. Um, so what we can do with this now that we've got this debug log is that we can now set breakpoints. So we, oh, okay, they're breakpoints. There's two things that we can set. We can set a breakpoint and a, um, I can't remember, hang on a second. Okay, so this is the trailhead, which is the setup apex replay debugger, which is, probably one of the trails that I've found that I actually really learnt something and really learnt actually how to do something really useful. So I already had that point set up Apex Reboot, debug your code. So they, they're starting with Apex tests and um, we're, I'm not doing Apex tests here. 
so I'm just using the uh, existing debugger logs. So this is where we're at, the set the breakpoints and checkpoints. Uh, use the debug toggle breakpoint and ssdx toggle checkpoint commands to toggle on and off breakpoints and checkpoints. Checkpoints are a special feature for debugging Apex code. So, you know, Visual Studio Code, if you've ever done some, um, you know, just some C-sharp code or something like that, you would use this and breakpoints and step through the code and go, you know, uh, debugging, start debugging, uh, etc. Et so, but for Apex, because it's still on the server, we've got to set these checkpoints. Um, I think that's what it is. So, a breakpoint instructs the running program to pause at a specific line number. Checkpoints are a special feature for debugging Apex code and it captures heap dumps. Okay, you can set as many breakpoints as like you can only set up to five checkpoints at one time. SFDX toggle checkpoint. I don't need any heap dumps at the moment, so but um, let's just see how we go with it. So if I want to, on this line, deep, uh, command power SFDX, toggle checkpoint. Okay, so we've got a checkpoint. You see it's um, a little, just only a very little difference between the checkpoint and the breakpoint. Um, so I'll set a breakpoint here. There's only p certain places you can set a breakpoint also, like you can't set it on everything. And then the next trick is that you do have to upload your checkpoints to to Salesforce. SFDX update checkpoints in org. So you must tell Salesforce about your checkpoints so the heap dumps are allocated as your code executes. So now I'm a little bit confused because I'm using the replay debugger. Okay, so anyway, let's, um, I've already got my logs that I'm replaying, so I don't know. Okay, uh, so command palette, update checkpoints and org. Let's just try it. Again, it's taking a while. I'm finding everything with this um, is taking a while. Okay. So we've updated our checkpoints in the org. Okay. So the next step we can do, um, again, I'm, please forgive me, I'm not 100% sure about exactly what those checkpoints do and what, they, what they're giving us the thing. So we can now launch the replay debugger and we can choose our the latest debug log. So as we ran the debug log and downloaded the debug log, it found that debug log, so now it's put it in SFDX tools debug logs and we can open that. So it's taken the debug log that we generated, open that one, okay, and it is allowing us to step through it. So we could step into and go through the trigger and step into it. So it's, we're back to very similar um, stuff as we would with regular code where we can step through code. So for our Salesforce work, this is like the first time we've been able to do this. So what we can do is continue until we hit the um, the breakpoint or the, the checkpoint. See that didn't it went straight through to the checkpoint. Um, so again, there's only a couple of places you can put checkpoints in there. And here is the call stack. So again, I'm not 100% sure how to read that, but what we can see here is this variables panel. So this is helpful. Um, so paused on breakpoint. Um, and so that new tasks is null. That's fine because I've got, I'm not adding new tasks until down here. My lead list is all, um, my brand new lead created. So that's got the, <clears throat> you 
you know the product interest of cookbook authorship there so that's my apps my lead list and if i had entered you know, in, inserted multiple leads that would be a json representation of all those multiple leads i've inserted and that one lead for because i'm looping through each lead i've inserted i've only inserted the one lead and i've got um the status last modified date the company product interests all the individual details in that one lead so that's pretty useful and then okay so if i step into it this old leads no new leads okay so again old leads is the old trigger trigger dot old old map so of course that's null on a new um on a new record new leads is the uh lead object double oq and I step into it task status equals and now we've got a task variable here so task so step into it status not started so we can see here all of the um as we go through we can see here all of the variables being set so that's actually really pretty cool uh owner id activity date that's a bit annoying that it's um okay so this is because it's reading the debug log so it's, it's actually pretty cool technology the way it's actually um, generating all of this from the debug logs but because debug logs are so annoyingly um, truncated uh, there is not wait any more any way you're going to get actual real data out of this this is not going back to your database and seeing the actual data they put, you're putting in there um, it is just running the it through the debug log that you've already generated okay so it's you know don't think this is live even though it looks live it looks like it's generating the stuff it's it's not live okay so um tasks or add tasks so you know i don't know what i'm doing here um so i've got a who id i've got a what id i've got an owner id um i've got a subject and activity date um I suppose I, what I, my next debugging plan is to actually go and create a lead um, from from scratch, p passing in exactly that data, you know, with the with the right, you know, who ID, what IDs, um, and seeing what what am I missing? What is the va the the values that I'm missing? So I'll just go and do that and see if we can get further um, along with using this replay debugger and see if there's anything else more to um, to show you as I more debug what I'm what I'm doing here okay so I do believe I found what the problem is um, the I'm setting the assigned to and the what are, the who ID as a user and you know that again when you're writing code You've also got to understand how your org works so um, as part of writing code it's good to have your your object manager up there to see the, all the field names etc but it's also good to do this um, step by step process so um, so the what uh, the, the who ID I'm putting a user in there and I believe that's probably why it's failed so uh, I don't need um, because I've got a, a what ID I don't need a who ID for my task so now so this is where the debug log gets interesting I am going to save that I don't have automatic um, deploy turned on so I'm going to so let me just stop and I'm going to use my trigger handler um, 
this is yeah this is not the best way of doing things just doing one deploy at a time of course save um, when you've got a class at this level doing save on deploy is probably the easiest thing to do okay so let's just try and um, create our lead again and it's probably gonna break on something else like this is this is a a terrible piece of code that is would never be written in code and B is I've written it terribly uh, so so I'm just gonna put test 2 and test code 2 there um, and open not contacted product interest and we'll do cookbook editing there and it's still got okay right so I don't know what I'm doing with the code but we'll just continue with looking at the the um, the debug log now okay so here is the trap I've just generated another um, debug log for the the code where I'm not passing in the who ID but if I just go straight to start de start debugging um, I don't have and you know, I open that one that's my 605 p.m. one um, and so I would still be just looking at that old old um, debug log if I went to continue and went down to that checkpoint okay so um, that's just test code not test code 2 okay so what you've got to do is you still got to then go um, command palette get apex debug logs so I'm not sure whether you can do that while you're debugging and there is the 620 p.m. one so then we can get that one and then we can launch the apex replay debugger again I don't know why it's up there and down there and then okay and then we can get our 622 um, look hopefully there's an easier way of doing that that just seems a bit convoluted to have to 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 do all that so that's the lesson in doing this debug log is that it's not live uh, it is looking it is trying to replicate the coding experience you have in other languages and the debugging experience you have in other languages by downloading a very detailed debug log and um, mimicking what the server is doing on your local machine but the technology is just so cool um, it is you know I'm very happy with it I don't know do we uh, you know are we okay that we can read debug logs enough to sort of see does this is this more helpful um, you know I think once you start to sort of understand debug logs and you and you can sort of you know point to where the error is is it going to be worthwhile doing all of this stuffing around to download these debug logs set checkpoints um, do all this to get it to just to, to see it in the deep the same debug logs in a more friendly format I don't know and of course like the call stack um, might be you know useful the heap stuff that we've set, set might be useful I haven't got into that yet so this is just baby steps this is just the first step of just being able to loop through those um, the debug logs and see see the variables and see the the next the next steps so hopefully that helps and hopefully that will help you um, use and um, get to know how to use your debug logs next thing I don't know is how to turn this off like um, yeah how to st stop uh, recording detailed logs if you do, if you don't want it I think if you exit out of uh, Visual Studio Code and enter back in it's not there anymore but I don't know if there's a way to s stop them so hopefully that helps <laughs>